Welcome to Dane Leesk Adventures. In this adventure, I've brought us to Butchart Gardens, where we're gonna check out the different flowers they have and the different sites and <laughs> see what they have to offer. It's a very big tourist attraction here in Victoria, BC, so I feel it'd be a good adventure to do. It's looking pretty good so far. We haven't even entered the place yet. <laughs> it's kind of like being in a being in Banff if Banff had flowers. Start here. Let's take a look at the map. All right, so we're right here. And I guess we're gonna go this way, through the sunken gardens. Okay, and then we can go that way, to the Dragon Fountain, around Rose Garden, around Japanese Garden, Star Pond, and then end back where we began. And that will be a walk in the garden. And I did not know that they did allow dogs here, because this would have been a great adventure for Luca. So, oh well, maybe next time. Start the tour off with a nice little fountain snail. Very pretty. <laughs> down, down, down we go into the sunken garden. Holy cannoli. <laughs> and I can't even get my geraniums to sprout. These guys seem to know what they're doing. It's absolutely stunning. Old mining equipment. Quarry walls. The barren rock face of the quarry presented Jenny Butcher with a challenge. She hung in a boson's chair to plant ivy in the crevices in the rock walls. Whoa. 
Ross Fountain Lookout. This smaller quarry was a source of limestone in the 1860s. It was here that Ian Ross, grandson of Mr. and Mrs. Butchart, devised a spectacular fountain with the assistance of his plumber, Adrian Butler, and his electrician, Vic Dawson. The, Rose Foundation, the Ross Foundation commemorated the 60th anniversary of the Butchart Gardens when it was installed in 1964. Ross Fountain Lookout. Directly behind the Ross Fountain lies Todd Inlet and the site of Vancouver Portland Cement Company established in 1904. Adjacent to the plant at Todd Inlet was a village that housed the employees. A lot of history at this Butchart Garden. Okay, we just got through the sunken garden, which was beautiful. And now we're gonna pass by the bog garden and then up to the Rose Carousel to the Dragon Fountain. Let's go. Soda Fountain sit in. The factory buildings have been demolished and the land is now designated as provincial parkland. The one remaining chimney is within the Butchart Gardens and stands as a beacon to the cement industry it once served. Where is this chimney? Ah, there it is. Never seen a bog garden before, but it's very pretty. And that's the carousel. We gotta get on that. <laughs> Here we go, <laughs> on the carousel. I believe the giraffe will be my steed. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Woo! <laughs> Jeez Louise, it's like going back in time. Reminds me when I was younger and I had my rocking horse. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Crap? Jeez, that was a lot of fun. Raven beaver with grouse, otter with pups, and clam frog. This totem pole was carved in classic Coast Sailor style by master carver Charles Elliott of the Sartlip Nation. I might have said that wrong. It was dedicated on September 9th, 2004, not only to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Butchart Gardens, but also in recognition of the rich cultural heritage of the local indigenous people. Very stunning. Eagle with salmon, orca, bear with salmon. This totem pole was carved in contemporary Coast Sailor style by master carver Doug LaFortune of Sawau Nation, which I probably said wrong. It was dedicated on September 9, 2004, not only to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Butchart Gardens, but also in recognition of the rich cultural heritage of the local indigenous people. Very, very pretty. How many years of, of practice would it take to be able to carve a totem pole that beautiful? Concert Lawn. Under the sponsorship of Mr. and Mrs. Ian Ross, the Victoria Sympathy Orchestra performed summer concerts on the main lawn between 1953 and 1967. Conducted by Hans Gruber, they featured many international artists such as Teresa Stratus, uh, Bernard Turgeon, and Grace Bumbry. On occasion, guest conductors were invited to lead the orchestra. Quite a few events that have happened here. Seed and fireworks fields. In 1903, the land now occupied by the Butchart Gardens was purchased from a local dairy farmer, Mr. Fernie. 
Reservoirs were excavated in 1969 to ensure a water supply for irrigation. The single jet fountain was installed to aerate the water supply in the largest reservoir, now the focal point of the fireworks display. So Butcher Gardens usually has a big fireworks display during the summer, but because of all the fire restrictions, they decide to put that on hold for the next while. So unfortunately, we won't be seeing fireworks tonight, but you know, it is what it is. Maybe next year. Wow, a water breathing dragon. Very stunning. June 13th, 2015, this magnificent dragon fountain was presented by the two the Butcher Gardens by the Suzhou Municipal Government on behalf of the People's Republic of China in conjunction with the 35 in the 35th anniversary of the sister city relationship between the city of Victoria and the city of Suzhou. The dragon is a miraculous uh, animal of ancient Chinese legend and the Chinese people are its descendants. This dragon brings to our garden good wishes for seasonable weather. Rose Garden, Japanese Garden. Well, 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 what do we have here? Pig. Now why is there a pig here? The Butchart Boar, the original Porcelino, or a little pig, sits on the south side of Straw, Mar Straw Market in Florence, Italy. For generations his nose has been affectionately rubbed to bring good luck so that today his snout is finely burnished. burnished. About 1620, uh, Pietro Tacca cast the little pig in bronze from the marble boar Sing Hiao, now displayed at the Ilfuzi Gallery in Florence. He completely changed the simple base of the earlier statue by adding a small pool surrounded by plants, frogs, snakes, and a turtle. It is also likely that Taka restored the Singa Hiali itself after uh, fire partially destroyed the Ilfuzi. Authorities have suggested that the boar was part of a larger group representing a hunting scene. The animal's unique position indicates neither repose nor attack, rather the wild beast awakened suddenly by the sound of the hunt. This rare copy of Porcelino was acquired by Mr. and Mrs. Ross on a trip to Florence. He called, uh, he is called Taka, in honor of the artist who created him, and he is dedicated to all the children and animals who visit the Butchart Garden. Oh, so it's an important pig. Well, rub his nose for good luck. Such an amazing place here in Victoria, what they were able to do.
Well, that was a nice trip in the flower garden and we saw a lot of pretty sights and learned a lot about the place. I'm really happy I got to do this and ride a carousel, so I'd mark this down as another good adventure. Thank you for watching Danelisk Adventures and I'll be happy to bring you another adventure real soon.